Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. And while it is a busy time and a lot of craziness is happening in the K State recruiting world, because on this day they landed Coleman Hawkins on the basketball team, the highly sought after Illinois transfer. We have we already have our video up about that. So we're here to talk about football, who just a you know, less than an hour before Coleman Hawkins made his announcement, uh, we got a commitment to see come through. Uh, initially, we saw Taylor Bratt's cat signal, and immediately there was scrambling amongst the three of us, like, who could it be? Who could it be? And then, sure enough, it was Sawyer Schilke because there are so many people right now that K-State is recruiting that it could be them at any given time. That's how hot the Wildcats are on the recruiting trail. But it ends up being the uh, defensive player from Kearney, Nebraska, and K-State got him to flip from Northern Illinois. And this was a, another one of those guys that, like at the current moment, there's not a ton to the recruitment, but other people were showing interest and were wanting to get him in, get a better look at him at a camp. And uh, he came, saw K-State, got his offer after a camp, and uh, shut it down pretty quick and is now the seventh member of K-State's class. So uh, what can you tell us about the latest addition to the class of 2025? Yeah, so the interesting thing about Sire Shulky is kind of like Boone Morris uh, from the last class where although it says on his profile edge and defensive end, it's going to be more linebacker uh, for him and probably the Mike linebacker spot. Uh, so he's a fun person to watch in, in his film. He can really, really run. He runs a 4-6-40 and ran pretty similar to that in Manhattan, I believe. And is very, very physical. The thing that kind of set K-State over the edge in his recruitment is he has called K-State his dream school that he went or that he really wanted to go to. And another one where just because he hasn't had he had his offer for exactly a week doesn't mean that he wasn't a priority target or somebody that K-State really wanted. This is somebody that they had been recruiting for over a year. He went to a, a K-State game during the fall and went took a visit then. And kind of had been building that relationship, building that relationship. Case State invites him to a camp. He gets the offer. He shuts it down. I mean, that 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 is recruiting one on one. Like I talk all the time about how hard it is to get an offer from K State. The harder thing I think is to convince these prospects that you really want to see work out come to a camp. And K State's been really good at being able to see these guys that they've really wanted, and they get them to go to a camp. They get the offer, and then they shut it down. I mean, we saw that with Martel Jackson. We saw that with Dalton Knapp, and now we see that with Sawyer Schulke, where he's somebody that K-State's been wanting for a while and has at least wanted to see him in pads and in person. And as soon as they see him in person, they offer. And this is somebody, again, you can see how big of a priority target he is because they're probably going to take four linebackers uh, total this class, already had one, and they hadn't lost out on anybody, and they still took Sawyer Schulke's commitment. So that, that kind of shows where he was on K-State's recruiting board. Yeah, it's a it's just a, a fascinating kind of watch and update that they add another player here. And you you kind of went over uh, the the recruiting strategy the other day because we've done I mean in the last week what three or four different commit videos uh, and and you know there's signs that maybe we'll have more uh, over the course of the next week and then certainly uh, once we get past next weekend it could come hot and heavy for everybody uh, in terms of of what you've seen from Sawyer Shilke because you. You immediately said uh, there were some things that stood out to you that uh, <laughs> got you excited about his highlights that you watched earlier. Uh, what What is the real thing that, that kind of makes him pop, and why should people uh, be excited about this one when you see a guy that, okay, he was committed to Northern Illinois. Obviously, the rankings don't have him all that high right now. He's the ninth best player in the state of Nebraska. Uh, so what is it that people should know that gives them that little uh, trail of, oh, this this could be something that turns into to a really good pickup. I think the thing that should make K State fans the most excited about watching Sawyer Shilke is how physical he is because he is not afraid to put his face in and hit. And he will let you know when he hits you because it it's not like a soft hit. He will hit and hit hard. And he can really hit the hole fast. Like he's plenty fast to play in the Big 12 at the mic spot running that four, six. Another thing that kind of intrigues me that I had actually just learned is that he's a player that's planning to enroll early 
And I think that that will really help him and get kind of stronger up to speed and be somebody that can really make an impact. Uh, but I, I think that the thing that really pops is how fast and physical he is. And he's kind of like your prototypical Mike linebacker uh, for like where football is going, where he's not like super like slow and just kind of like a thumper that way. He's a speed thumper and a good sideline to sideline speed. Like, I mean, you could see right there yeah. that, that that was a pretty big hit. And it was all created by the fact that he's just he's moving faster than the running back that was going through the hole there. I mean, even that that last play where he the quarterback is running the option, he runs clear across the field to make the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, that that kind of shows the speed and athleticism that he, that he has. And I think that's kind of what you're seeing with K-State defensively with a lot of these prospects is they are going after a lot of guys that are very fast and very physical. And I mean, that that's that's exactly how K-State plays. So, I mean, it, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, this this goes into kind of what the philosophy has been now. Uh, over the last however many years since Chris Kleiman came to K-State, it's, hey, w they've decided that, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you need to get Big 12 athletes and then figure out what to do with them once they're here. All right, this is the play that Drew got really excited about that uh, he said that I, I needed to watch because uh, apparently expecting kid, but I guess maybe that wasn't the the one there. Uh, we'll have to find – I'll find that before we're out of here because you're you're really pumped about it. But at the end of the day, like, there's been a lot of talk about, hey, find the guy that can play here athletically, and then we'll find the right spot. And that kind of seems to be the thing with Sawyer Schilke, where obviously there's a frame to build off of. You see the speed that he plays with, and now you kind of look around and you, you think to yourself, okay, uh, maybe you're going to be able to build him up and he'll have uh, a lot that he can provide for you at the linebacker spot. Uh, by the way, like the just the thing that I noticed while I was whipping up the recruiting store or the commitment story real quick, because, you know, peek behind the curtain. Everybody knows how I am when it comes to commitment stories and everything. I like to be very prepared and kind of have everything ready. I was not ready for this one. So that's kind of that that's on me. But in the uh, whipping up the, the commitment story real quick, the, the thing that really jumped out to me is that poor Northern Illinois, because Casey yeah. hasn't, doesn't really like pick on them a lot, but I mean, Garrett Oakley was a one time Northern Illinois commit and now at Case State and is probably going to be one of the starting tight ends. And now, sorry, you're Shulky, a few years later, Northern Illinois commit camps at Case State, Case State offers flips to Case State. So uh, just poor Northern Illinois is, is what I'll say there. Yeah, that's uh, they're they're living the G5 lifestyle right there. Uh, especially if you're getting guys out of states that that Chris Kleiman and his staff do a good job in and continue to scour. So I would say if you're a recruit uh, in the state of Kansas, Nebraska, or Iowa, uh, or Missouri, and and you're committed to a G5 school, that school better be on high alert because uh, they they may not get to keep you uh, for as long as they would like. So uh, another addition for K State, they're up to seven now. Uh, in terms of kind of the next few steps in K-State's recruitment? Because I know one of the mailbag questions was asking me about what we thought the number of commits would be by the end of June. Obviously, we're a little over two weeks away from that. I kind of grouped 4th of July in with that because we know some guys like to commit over that big weekend. So that's the cutoff point. Is it? Is it? Was it ambitious of me to say that I think K-State gets to at least 12 or 13 commits by the 4th of July? No, I was actually talking to some people earlier about how I feel like I kind of uh, undersold K-State a little bit uh, back in like that February, March, where I said potentially 10 or more, because I think it could be in that 12, 13, 14 range. Mm -hmm. Because it, this is the thing that you have to remember, too, is that when K-State is rolling like this, that it causes not like a panic, but like it causes, it creates a little bit of pressure on other targets that maybe are kind of on the fence or want to see other schools before they join in because spots are shrinking. And like I said, K-State probably wants four linebackers and two are visiting this weekend and McGuire Richmond and Julius Sims. And then you also have Ashton Moore still out there. So spots are shrinking. And I think that's when you see kind of more and more commits kind of fill up. So I could easily see in that 12 to 15 range by probably like that third week of July. 
Yeah, it's it's funny when I was before because this commit came through when I was writing that, and I was already starting to think in my head, okay, like twelve, thirteen, whatever. And then you get a, a commitment that, like, obviously he was on our radars, but I don't know that we expected him to be the one that popped off today. And that starts to go, okay, well, then it seems like that number of 12, like I think I said 12 initially, and then I was like, well, that seems almost too attainable at this point. So K-State certainly in a good spot. They're filling things up pretty quick, and uh, they're they're getting guys that they want. And now uh, they get a little bit closer to kind of some of their big game hunting because we know that the Lincoln Cure visit is on the horizon next weekend uh, and plenty of others that they really want to uh, snag and have become a part of this 2025 class that's coming together rather quickly uh i guess last thing on the the 2025 class then how how many stragglers do you think there are in this class where uh we're sitting in october or yeah october is probably a good time and there are guys visiting that are still not committed anywhere k-state still trying to get them uh we know that that happens every year but to me it's it comes across as k-state is not going to have very many opportunities like that this year compared to the last couple of years, but how do you see that playing out in your eyes? Yeah. If you can get to that 14 or 15 number by, I mean, I won't even say by that, like July 4th, but if you can get to that 14, 15 number by August, you're probably looking at K-State probably going after like four or five high school players in that September, October range, which is a really good thing. I think because you're kind of seeing, that even though some of these guys haven't had offers for very long, again, you're still getting all of your priority guys because you're a lot of these guys, these guys are committing early and kind of jumping the line because they want it in so bad. And I think that that is always a good thing. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right. Well, there you go. K state, they add another class of 2025 and uh, we'll see what comes next for the wildcats as they'll have more uh, recruits in town this weekend and continue to try and build things up. And anytime the Wildcats get a commit, we'll have you covered right here on the KSO YouTube as well as over at On3. You can find K-State online there. Plenty of coverage today about football and basketball recruiting. The basketball roster is complete. Football, uh, always an ongoing process there, but uh, they are building the 2025 class out in a rapid fashion over the last couple of weeks. So that will do it for us. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.